All right, everybody, welcome to my live event. Uh, today we're going to talk about the um, divine feminine, sacred masculine, and the elements, and a little bit of astrology. Um, I'm Dr. Danny, you guys know me. Um, a lot of you guys are in the master class. For those of you that can't be here, we welcome you in spirit, but I know that you'll be watching. Um, I also want to thank uh, Captain Ike Rodriguez for, you know, <clears throat> having the space for us to get together and, and philosophize about the, uh, you know, the new cosmology that's coming our way. Um, the work that he's doing is actually going to bring a lot of people to us, and he's busy trying to, you know, created an army of astrologers that, that do this kind of astrology. So I want to share with you all um, a little bit of what I, I went through a couple of weeks ago that inspired me to go ahead and do uh, this, um, this live event with you guys. It was right around the um, 8th, 9th, 10th of, Mar of, um, of May. And the weekend before, I had gotten a whole ton of orders, a whole bunch of shot, like people just wanting readings from me. It was, it was glorious. I was having so much fun. Um, but I was burning really, really hot. And all of a sudden, um, I got sick. I got sick like Tuesday night, Wednesday morning. I, I couldn't even function. I, I was just, it was a GI bug. I was just purging. Um, I couldn't eat. All I could do was drink water. Um, so it was kind of an involuntary fast. And I don't know if you guys have ever fasted on purpose or involuntarily, but essentially you, you, you can have some vision sometimes. <laughs> and so I ended up with this crazy vision one afternoon while I was sleeping. And it was, um, it was basically, I, it felt like a purification of energy through the four elements. And what I saw was the ocean, a, um, a rock volcano in the middle of the ocean. It was, it was uh, erupting lava, hot rock, uh, and as the rock hit the air, it was turning into a mist and being turned around in this hurricane. So I had all four of the elements there, and earth, water, air, and fire um, in this vision. And when I finally was well enough to, you know, kind of look at the astrology, because I couldn't even study astrology those two days, when I could finally actually look at the astrology, I was, I was amazed at what I could see. Uh, what was happening was there was Mars had literally entered overnight Tuesday night in, from Gemini to Cancer, and Mars going into Cancer is a very cooling energy for the for the will, for the desire, for the passion, for the heat. It literally just puts a lid on it. Okay, and because I was going burning so hot, I didn't even anticipate that that was coming. And ugh, the opposition of Mars to Pluto at that very moment in between Capricorn and Sagittarius. Um, and by the way, we'll go over this, but all four elements were involved in this opposition. I was stunned. I was like, holy hell, that's literally what I just went through. Like my body had the earth and the water and the fire and the air just purged completely through it. But what finally happened was that I was like, oh, wow. Okay. I need to talk about this because um, Venus is coming up with her opposition to Pluto. Uh, Mars had a square to Chiron not too long ago. She's doing that right now. And then there are, um, they're both mystic squaring with the nodes in Pluto. So I thought I'd go over that, all of that, and then talk about their conjunction that's happening on July 1st. Um, then I have a couple of announcements for you. And then we're gonna, I just wanna set a few intentions. I have 10 intentions for the sacred masculine and 10 intentions for the divine feminine, and then we'll wrap it up. Okay, so I want to hear from you guys. Anybody have any questions so far? You guys good? Thumbs up? Okay. So um, let me go into my quick presentation. I'll talk to you guys for a little bit here. We'll just start with this. Uh, let me share my screen. Hold on. Share screen. And we'll get into this right here. So we'll start with this. When a man tells a story, you get you get basically just the facts straight ahead. Here's what you're getting. When a woman tells a story, it's a it's a creative flow. She's she's you know going wherever the energy currents take her, but in the process finds a um, a deep intricate pattern within the universe that is a story of creation. Um, so this talk is about. Um, Energies and astrology, the divine, feminine, and sacred mas masculine. And I want you guys to just kind of look at this picture really closely with me. Um, 
So here you have the the divine, uh, the sacred masculine and the divine feminine, and they're they're sort of um, holding <clears throat> kind of at their third eye chakra and sacral chakras this DNA looking sort of thing, <clears throat> the tree of life, so to speak. Um, here in the tree, you see symbols for religions. On the male side, you see um, windmills and animals being penned in. And on the feminine side, you see snakes, rivers, just nature, uh, running free, running wild. But the point of this is that this is the first separation. The creation story, we started off as one. I am one. We are one, right? And as the distortion of energy came through, we are now two. We separate. There's a polarity. There's a surge of energy in the field, and there's there's two things that are the opposite yet the same. You see this everywhere. These are called unified polarities. You have light and darkness. You can't have light without dark. You can't have dark without light. Positive and negative charges. The right and the left hemisphere of the brain, the right and left hand, the right and left path, um, energy and matter. Uh, they're, they're essentially the same thing. You can't have one without the other. Obviously, day and night, um, and divine feminine and sacred masculine. And that's what we're going to talk about today. So, some of the energies that you might see in iconography are the yin and the yang. So, the, the, uh, the yang being the masculine principle and the yin being the feminine. You often see Mother's Day, Father's Day. That's what we're sort of right in the middle of right now, right? Mother's Day and Father's Day. So it's it's almost like the timing's perfect. And I just felt very guided to, to bring it to you right now. Um, and then in our ancient past, we also have um, iconography and art depicting these two energies because they're very basic. They're very fundamental. So on the left, you have Isis and Osiris of Egypt. And on the right, you have Seshat and Toth of Egypt. Uh, the two on the right were the educators, the, the bringers of wisdom, and then these two were the goddess. And you have, you know, right now, um, Venus is conjunct Sirius, which is Isis. So that energy is happening right now. Right now. Um, you can also see the energy in other religions, too. So um, on the left is the uh, Shakti Shiva energy. So this is from Hinduism. And essentially, the, uh, the Shakti is the feminine energy, the wild creation surging energy, and, and uh, the Shiva is the, uh, the male energy. And it comes from the top to the, through the crown, while Shakti comes from the earth, and they meet in the heart center. So uh, that, that energy combines a heart-centered, compassionate awareness, which is also what Jesus Christ taught, and his feminine counterpart is the Magdalene. And I was talking with um, Frederica earlier today. We looked at this image and she noticed how the garments of these two uh, characters were the same but opposite. And um, also that uh, there's another hand pointing to the throat of the divine feminine. Uh, and I don't know about you, you guys are all divine feminine. So you've probably felt at some point in your life, some kind of choking, some inability to really express yourself uh, the way you're guided to. Um, same thing with men too, but uh, you know this is not a pity party for women. I'm just you know coming from a feminine perspective. So it was very interesting to kind of see her perspective on that. And also the two sides in the background are different in, in a way. There's the river again associated with the feminine and the more structured uh, things in the background behind the masculine. And then here you have um, Utsu and Inanna. They were the twins, the god goddess, god goddess of Babylonia. Yeah. If you look a little closer at these two guys, uh, the one on the right is Nana, and she's just a little bit different than her twin Utu. They're also called um, Shemesh and Ishtar. So you can see how through through time, through history, our ancestors have explained the, the divine feminine and masculine energies in, in their art and in the gods uh, and goddesses that they worship. Um, and, and even these are astrology symbols. And I'm sure you guys have seen, I talk about how um, the, the older symbol for, for Mars, which is the Venus symbol inverted, and then you combine, you combine the two and you get the symbol for Earth, which is energy and matter combined. So when you look at the, um, the sacred masculine energy, all these archetypes that exist in our history and in our iconography, the Yang, the Father, Osiris, Thoth, Shamash, Utu, Shiva, Mars, Apollo, and Christ, 
This is basically the energy of the divine will and a space in which all of creation takes place. There's also an, an overarching awareness of all of creation coming from the sacred masculine. And on the other end of the polarity is the divine feminine which is the force of creation. Everything that lives in the manifest yet is formless. So the yin, Isis, mother, Inanna, Ishtar, Shakti, Venus, the Magdalene, and Seshit. I kind of look at, I saw this and I thought this is perfect because if this divine creation energy, this um, uh, Shiva, Inanna here did not have complete faith and trust um, that she would be caught, there would be disaster. But there she is fully expressing herself uh, in, in the way that she's supposed to in that creative moment with the little heart on her shoe. <laughs> uh, and the sacred masculine holding her, being her container, being aware of the energy that she's producing so that he can support her creation. So once the one becomes two, then what happens? So this is where it gets really interesting for me, and this is where I, I wanted to dive into the elements for just a little bit. So spirit becomes two, the feminine and the masculine, and yet we have four elements plus spirit, and the feminine elements are actually earth and water, and the masculine are air and fire, and we see these in astrology. And when you pull the, the, the five elements together, you get you get this pentacle or this pentagram. This is a very sacred structure, especially for the divine feminine. Uh, so I just thought that was super interesting. Uh, then I thought to myself, well, what if we took the, these four elements and made a 3D picture? What would we get? We would get a pyramid, right? We get spirit up here, and then we get the elements on the four sides. So once again, a very sacred structure uh, that's been built for us in our, our very distant past to sort of describe to us how uh, creation is made. And we have a, we have a zodiac um, to help us describe it as well. So here it is again. So now our, um, here's our astrology. So basically, this is kind of the consensus. Essentially, you have masculine and feminine signs, and starting with Aries, it goes from masculine and feminine, just kind of back and forth through signs, maybe like a wave, you know, kind of the masculine and into the feminine. Um, but Ophiuchus, I don't know. I kind of feel like um, Ophiuchus is either either neither or both. It's, it's sort of the spirit, the ether, so it is both maybe before it actually split into the two archetypes. If you guys have any thoughts on that, this is where you can jump in and tell me what you think. Um, am I doing good so far? Are you enjoying this? Yes? Good? Okay. Awesome. Thanks. All right. So um, so then this kind of reminds me. So if you have a few kids, the spirit at the top, then you have the masculine and feminine. Definitely. Awesome. Great. You have the masculine and feminine constellations. This kind of reminds me of this, right? Now, our signs can also be further divided into the elements, right? So we have our fire signs. We have Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, the air signs, Gemini, Libra, and Aquarius, Earth, Taro, Taurus, Virgo, and Capricorn, and then water signs, Cancer, Scorpio, and Pisces. And then, of course, Ophiuchus is associated with ether. So what does that remind you of? That reminds you of this, right? And then again, our, our pyramid. So we have a fucus here and then our 12 signs uh, within the three corners of each pyramid. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> I just thought that was so cool. Our planets are also associated with um, masculine and feminine energy. Um, this is kind of the older uh, Ptolemy astrology before they knew about um, Uranus, you know, the outer planets and Chiron. And um, <laughs> what was so interesting is that Ptolemy based his assessment of a planet's femininity based on its moistness. I don't really know what that means. Um, but so it's basically the moon and Venus and then Mercury, sometimes both feminine and masculine, with the masculine uh, um, stars being the sun, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. Um, <clears throat> in more modern astrology with our other planets, we can sort of see that uh, you know, there's more players involved. So, and it looks like the feminine has a little bit more on her side if you include Earth. 
Um, if not, it's, it's pretty much balanced. So Mercury and Uranus kind of play both sides of the fence. And once again, I think Chiron is actually neither. Chiron is is everybody's deep wounds. You're, you're neither male or feminine with Chiron energy, in my opinion. So that's basically the, the elements and uh, the divine masculine and feminine in terms of just the terminology and some geometry and some basic ideas. And these are the um, aspects that I want to go over with you. <clears throat> so not too long ago, um, I would say back in April, uh, Mars made a square with Chiron. Venus started a square with Chiron just uh, on Friday. Uh, Mars opposed Pluto two weeks ago, and Venus is going to be opposing Pluto on the 29th. Um, Mars is right now in a mystic square with Pluto in the nose, and Venus will be also doing that at the beginning of June, and then on July 1st, we have a Mars-Venus conjunction. So I'm just going to show you those real quick. It's like seven quick charts. And then um, if you guys want to chime in while we're looking at the charts, and if y'all see anything that pops out at you, I'm welcome to hear you. So let me do this first. This was Mars square Chiron. And the way that I looked at this transit, I even wrote an article. It was one of the first articles I wrote with my new website. Um, essentially, this is the collective wounds of the, the sacred masculine. Like, you know, what do we think about when we think of the wounded male? What is, what is he worried about? You know, he's worried about providing, he's worried about being good enough, he's worried about being attractive, he's worried about attracting a mate, um, all of those things. And when Chiron comes along, it's almost like an alien made your head and starts putting you down and thinking terrible, you know, you start thinking terrible things about yourself. And so this is a tough time for the, for the masculine especially in terms of being able to communicate what they need because of Gemini and being deep in the waters of the collective wounds of Pisces. So this was a tough energy uh, for Mars, uh, people that have Mars energy. So let me look at Venus because she just did that. Venus square Chiron. So now she's doing that essentially from the same position because, you know, remember Chiron is not moving very quickly, but Mars and Venus are. So Venus is pretty much, and this is the, the overarching story, is that Venus is following in the footsteps of Mars. Mars is forging ahead and handling all these really tough aspects with Venus in support behind him, never quite, you know, doing it at the same time. Uh, and then Venus will go through the same thing. And then on July 1st, they can jump. So now Venus square Chiron. I'm sure you ladies can relate to this. This is the um, collective was the divine feminine. I know I can. Um, I recently uh, did a, um, a somatic uh, breathing ritual. This was uh, Friday, this, this past Friday. And basically what you do, it was um, three rounds of the somatic breathing where you breathe in like this. And basically what you're doing is you're hyperventilating. You're, you're basically getting your adrenaline up and you're hyperventilating. And the person that was guiding it towards the end of the first session said, what is your, what's your biggest fear? And at that point you're, you're a little bit weak. So you, so you can kind of let your mind take over. And the thing that came up to me was fear of abandonment, fear of banishment. Holy cow. It was so profound. Um, during the second round, um, it was letting yourself sort of feel that energy. And it was so incredible. It was so amazingly cleansing and, and purifying. And that's when I got to thinking about sort of the divine feminine wounds, the collective wounds, you know, are, are we pretty enough? Are we smart enough? Um, is it okay if we set boundaries? Is it okay if we say no? Is it okay? You know, all those things that women have to go through. And once again, with, with Chiron, to me, it just feels like there's this nagging, insecure person just chatting away at you like oh you shouldn't have done that you know almost foreign to your normal happy everyday thoughts um and so for that kind of energy i just say i just tell people just trust your reading that's just you know if you, if you need to be alone so you don't project any of your wounds on anyone do that heal from within uh, so <clears throat> that was that energy then you've got the uh energy that i was talking about with the purging the Mars opposed Pluto. This one is pretty crazy. I'm going to go into this one a little bit more so you can see why the elements are important. So here's Mars. Here's Pluto. 
Here's Gemini, an air sign. Here's Cancer, a water sign. Here's Capricorn, an earth sign. And here's Sagittarius, fire sign. Look at these two characters. They're both on the cusp. And this was the exact night that I fell sick, the exact night that Mars transitioned into uh, Cancer. So I literally felt this energy in my body. I saw it on the chart and it was happening in the sky. And so I just, I wanted to share that with you guys. This, this was so amazing. This to me was, um, you know, Mars is your will, right? Mars is, is passion. Uh, Mars is drive. And Pluto is purification and empowerment. Um, and purification and empowerment sound really awesome, but like, like pure water. You know, well, something had to burn in order for this water to become pure. Something had to die for this water to become pure. You know, the bugs that were in here had to die so that I could drink pure water. Uh, so purification can be awesome, but things have to die. So for me, my will literally had a little death and, and came back, you know, in a different space because of what was happening in the sky. So I want to ask you guys, have you guys had any experiences in the last couple of weeks where you're feeling this kind of a purification of your will, of your passion, of your sexual energy, of anything that's associated with Mars. It's okay if you don't. I'm just curious. Anybody? Yeah? You talk about it? Yes, I have. Awesome. Anybody? Do you want to elaborate? I mean, you don't have to, but you can if you want to. Yes, I have. Okay. Yeah, I definitely can. Um, oh, sorry, sorry. I have it on both screens. Okay. Let me. Can you hear me? I can. Okay. Yeah. Um. You know, I've been. Uh. Uh. I was with the same life partner since I was 19 years old. Uh. He passed away about four or five years ago here in the house. And I learned more about him in his departure. I should say it confirmed more about him that I got, my femininity gave me inclinations, but I kind of pushed it off for different reasons. And uh, so I learned a lot or confirmed a lot about him when he passed away. And so I couldn't argue, I couldn't fight because he wasn't here. So I had to process all of those emotions and the grief and the hurt do all that adjusting um and I have you know I, I'm very proud that I've done the work but I realize um the shakiness uh what has been coming up for me is that I can't make it I need the protection of a man or the, the protection through his provision yet I've made more money and wealth than any man I've ever been with but that narrative um uh, being inside of me affected how far I go without taking on more responsibility of other people. So the dedication to myself, the way I love and how I love has allowed me to see how much I was taking in for people to depend on me. Um, but now since I'm letting that go and, and using the Pluto um, in retrograde in my second house and dealing with the energy that's been stolen and things like that, I see where I am okay you know and I even just recently told the new guy that likes me I was like you know what I really am not even into sex right now I don't even you know it, I haven't had it so you know that used to define me you know the, the, having are you gonna have another child all these things define my femininity but it wasn't truly who I was so um uncovering and 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 it's like to me doc it's a lot of layers that are coming off of me, I'm experiencing them and I'm still involved with life. I'm not on vacation. So I'm having to merge all of these experiences into my everyday life and be true to me and still maintain. And it has allowed me to hire more people, um, hire different people. It has allowed me to trust, to release things into another group's hand. Um, so I'm, these these things are coming off of me but I'm still implementing in my everyday life and I'm very proud of that because sometimes you know we study 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 then we take a minute and then we implement but it's almost like it's happening and I get to implement at the same time 
Yeah, that's, that's awesome. awesome. That's awesome. Because <laughs> this is that energy right here. This is Venus doing the opposition to Pluto. This is going to be happening at the end of the month in the same elements. Wow. Okay, so our Venus energy, um, this, this is literally, okay, nine days from now. This is going to start, and it's going to transit for, um, I think, 10 days. Because Venus okay. is slowing down also. So Venus is going to have to go through that same purification process. Like, okay. what, what does she love? What does she value? What does she create? And, and you better come at Pluto pure. Because Pluto is wow. in retrograde. And he's going to dig deep. He's going to dig deep. <laughs> Wow, thank you. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this is it. This is this is such a synchronous time right now for the divine feminine and, and the sacred masculine. Like what what do we what do we want? What do we value? What do we love? What are we willing to do to go for it? You know, and like what's next? And and what's happening right now, um, oh my gosh, it just gets better. Um is the Mars Mystic Square. That is going to happen once he's finished. Um, it's already started. So here it is. You see that? So you have Pluto up here, or Pluto here, Mars up here, and then the nodes here. And the nodes are conjunct with Mercury and Jupiter. So now it's it's getting leveled up for that will, for that passion. You know, Mars is kind of paving the way for Venus because a few weeks later, a week, I think it's the second, she's going to be doing the same thing. So what do we have in the mystic square? Remember, we have, we have that square and it's creating pressure. And what does pressure do, right? It creates a diamond, right? And with Jupiter at the north node, now Jupiter, how, what, is, what is Jupiter's highest octave? Jupiter is enlightened and full of wisdom when he has faith, when he believes, when he believes in what's coming. When he believes in what's possible, right? He's also abundance. Mercury is there with truth and knowledge. So there's truth and knowledge and purity for the for the will, for the masculine will in this mystic square. But it has to be it has to be true. It has to be pure. It has to be the healed Mars. Because if, if there's any wounds now, now it's going to come up. And hopefully, Chiron already did a little bit of that, so that we are pure. Right. So we had the pure, we had the, the lessons with Chiron. Now we're a little bit pure. Now we hit Pluto and it's all on. Because it's gonna get better after this. <laughs> Don't despair. Um, let me do one more with um uh, Venus Mystic Square. And we can see that. So here's her mystic square. She doesn't have the the, uh, the benefits of Mercury with this on the North Node, uh, but she still has the benefits of Jupiter. So it's believing in what she loves. It's believing in what she values. It's experiencing that which she loves. And, and both of them are in Cancer, and they're getting closer and closer. They're not quite conjunct over here. I'm going to show you that in a second. But basically, um, yeah, I'll say that for the next one. So yeah, so another mystic square for Venus, following the footsteps of Mars, purification of the will, purification of the creation and the love. And, and then, and then you guys, here's where the, uh, the show gets good. Mars and Venus conjunct on July 1st. So right here in hot, steamy, fiery Leo, this is the closest that these two luminaries are going to get. Um, ever since Venus was at her superior conjunction at the end of October last year, in at, at the very end of Virgo here, she's gone, she's passed over Pluto, she's passed over Saturn, Neptune, Chiron, the North Node, Jupiter, Uranus, the Sun, and Mercury. And now she is about to get close enough to kiss Mars. But then after this, um, in a few days, she'll go retrograde. She'll start her retrograde motion and Mars will take off this way. So she never quite gets to pass over Mars. And then what's so beautiful about this story is that she actually will eventually catch up to Mars, but it will be next May and it will be right here as Pluto enters into Capricorn. You'll, you're going to have Venus, Mars, Pluto all right here on this cusp uh, next May when she finally can 
you know, overcome the energy of Mars. And so that is the, the combined story. But when you get Mars and Venus this close to each other in the zodiac, this is basically like hot, fiery passion. This is, or this can be the will of love. This can be the drive of value. So what, whatever big, hot, creative idea is in your head, this is the time to implement it. If there's a, if there's a passionate romance waiting to happen, light that up because that's waiting to happen this is a very very strong time for healing of the divine feminine and um, sacred masculine and what's so nice about this day is that there's also a um a Merkaba here right do you see it so you've got venus and mars training on chiron training on the moon with the um other triangle uh with mercury the south node and saturn so see much more beautiful energy. There's there's a purification process going on through the next couple of months. And then when these guys are together, oh, it's going to be a great summer. So that was the astrology that I wanted to kind of talk with you guys about. Do you, do you all have any thoughts about any of those uh, aspects? No, you guys are good? Okay, perfect. Perfect. Well, then I am going to stop sharing with you and I'm going to read to you my intentions for uh, the sacred masculine. There's 10 of them. And then I will read 10 for the divine feminine and we will call it a night. Okay. So I offer the following set of intentions and prayers for our fathers, brothers, sons, and lovers so that they may walk in the divine healing light of the creator. Pray that he will have an eternal perspective and glorify God in all that he does. Pray that he seeks God's plan for his family and his life. Pray that he walks in that purpose as well as he can. Pray that he chooses healthy, God-honoring habits and activities to pursue. Pray for his physical, spiritual, and emotional health. Number four, pray that he's slow to anger, shows patience, kindness, and mercy. Number five, pray that he will work hard in providing for his family and have discernment in financial matters. Number six, pray that his passion is focused on fighting for something rather than against it. Number seven, pray that he is surrounded by godly men who will help keep him accountable and encourage him to grow in his walk with the Lord. Number eight, pray that he will be a light to those around him and boldly share the truth. Number nine, pray that he's a godly example to his children and his community. And number 10, Pray that he will more fully grasp his identity in Christ and serve God and others with a pure heart. The next intentions I offer for our mothers, sisters, daughters, and lovers so that they may walk in the divine healing light of the creator. Number one, pray that she let go of what the world expects from her so that she can live her best life, the one in which her intuition guides her. Number two, Pray that she understands the great gift and responsibility of creation and procreation. Number three, pray that she see herself through the creator's eyes as worthy and as perfect as the creator himself. Number four, pray that she's called to service in a vocation that honors the divinity, the sovereignty, and the dignity of creation. Number five, pray that if she chooses a partner that they will honor, serve, and protect her. Number six, Pray that she surrounds herself with spiritual and kind women who can support her during difficult times. Number seven, pray that she speaks to the creator and her guides daily in her private moments and that she hears them speak to her through others throughout her day. Number eight, pray that she honors her body with nourishment, gratitude, and boundaries. Number nine, pray that she supports and serves other women in her community in need of gifts and her talents. And number 10, Pray that she teach young girls about living to serve one another, that they are perfect, smart, strong, divine, and inviolable, so that when they become women, they walk the highest path with grace. So that is that. Okay, I can certainly get that to you. All right, I guess we'll end it here. But, uh, thank you so much, guys. I'm going to put links in the Facebook replay for. Um, my um, 
uh, coaching offering. I uh, want to take people from uh, basically novice to fluent. So uh, if you guys want to check that out, it'll be three two-hour private sessions. Um, it's going to be like a boot camp with Dr. Danny. We're going to teach you speaking the language so you guys can share the wisdom. So I will say good night. Thank you all so much. Namaste. Thank you so much. This is beautiful. You're welcome. Good night.